I'm a believer, like forever. Mm. So like, I don't know. I feel like that runs deep for sure. I just love Justin. I always will. Hey everyone, it's your girl, Emily Curl, and today we're hanging out with Nessa and Jaden, and they're gonna take the booth for our 2021 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Hi guys, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. Hi. Hi, thank you for having us, honestly. So nice to see y'all. Now we're gonna go through our award ballots, and you're gonna tell me who has your vote for all of our awards. Sound good? Sounds great. Perfect, so let's throw the first one up on screen. We are starting with probably my favorite category. We have Best Lyrics with some absolute like baller songs nominated. So tell me a little bit about who you're gonna vote for on this and walk me through your process. You can go first. Um, I'm totally gonna vote for Billy for everything I wanted. So good. No, I just think it's crazy and like, I just love Billy. Everything that she does, she's amazing. And she has really mature lyrics and I think I relate to um, a lot because I feel like everything that she says has a double meaning. So no matter if like, you're actually like relating to what she's saying specifically, you kind of can still relate. Jaden, who are you going for for this one? Although Billy is fire, like <sighs> Billy's a legend, I feel like. Definitely throughout this list, I'd say like normally I would pick Billy, but before you go, Louis Capaldi, I don't know, that song's been with me for a <laughs> minute and like I cried to that song a lot, you know what I mean? So the fact that it was on here made me feel like it was a sign. So I got to go with Louis Capaldi. He's just like, I mean, the emotion behind the lyrics too, like how he delivers it is super important. So I, I, I had to go with Lewis. Love it. Great choices so far. We're off to a good start. Let's go on to our next category. This is best music video. So, I mean, we have Blinding Lights, Rain On Me, Dynamite, a lot of good ones here too. Tell me who you're going for. Nessa, you want to kick us off? Life is Good feature featuring Drake. I think that music video was so good. Yeah, we both agree on this one. Yeah. Yeah, that one. It was really entertaining, first off. All of Drake's videos are no, like yeah. insane. Like the God's Plan one, you know what I mean? The pop star one, I think is his best music video, but the Life is Good is so funny because they're just like playing different roles in oh, like yeah. normal life. And I think that just relates to like anything, your life can be good anywhere, you know what I mean? It's not just these people that are, you know, celebrities. We um, have or, like little skits in between. Yeah, it's kind funny, of funny, man. yeah, I love it. It is funny. <laughs> Love it. I love it. Let's throw up our next side. We have a couple more categories to go through. This next category, I think, is interesting because it's favorite choreography. And I feel like, especially being on TikTok, you know, you, you pay more attention to the dances and the way people move and the way they express themselves. What really jumped out to you here? Say So is literally like everywhere. You know what I mean? You just hear it everywhere. Everyone's doing the dance. There's certain songs on TikTok that seem to make it into like mainstream. Um, and that's definitely one of them. And it just stuck for a long time. I think the duration of how long it was like popping really speaks to why it should win. You know what I mean? And the people that were doing dances to it were fire. Like I could never do that. I suck at dancing. <laughs> good. 100% agree. I also think too, like in the TikTok space, it kind of started the whole like dancing movement and was kind of like a part of the beginning. So um, yeah, I love the dance. Awesome. Let's go on to best cover song. This is an interesting category. We have Lizzo, Harry Styles, Miley Cyrus, Sam Smith, Shawn Mendes. Walk me through your process for this one. I think we both agree yeah. on this one. Part of Glass cover by Miley Cyrus. Um, she just kills everything. She killed that shit, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like doing a cover, you know, you want to be original to you, but you also want to give, you know, credit to like the person who wrote it. Um, you know, and I really think she just embodies what that means you know a lot of like i know a lot of people do a lot of covers um but that one if you watched it she's like wearing this all black like silk outfit her hair is cut like 70s rock she just looks sick and like she killed it you know she owned it i think that's the main, most important part yeah if someone was gonna cover lottie die who would it be and why depends if, if it is it gonna be like a duet like would it be two artists in yeah because let's make it a duet i'm gonna hit up i'm gonna say kells i want kells to do my part that's what i would want MGK, that's why I want him on my part. Or Youngblood. I feel like Youngblood. Ooh, ooh, either one. I think for the girl, I feel like Halsey or Avril would be dope. Yeah, it'd be sick. Yeah. All right, next up we have Best Fan Army. Obviously, everyone has such amazing fans, so who are you going to go for for this one? Nessa, you want to kick us off first? BTS Army. They are insane. We love the BTS we love Army. Them. <laughs> We love BTS. Everyone, they're, they're, they literally go crazy. So like, if anyone were to say anyone else besides BTS is like, I feel like they're asking for it at that point. But um, I'm a believer, like forever. Mm. So like, I don't know. I feel like that runs deep for sure. I just love Justin. I always will. That's my man. Like, he's the reason I started singing as a kid. So 
I love the guy, but BTS is our answer. All right, let's move on to TikTok Bop of the Year. Jaden, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a logical person, so I've been trying to answer these accurately. Not all of them are like what I would want to say. And so for the Bop of the Year, I'd have to say Savage. Cause like, it's like huge. Like it's literally everywhere. Like even we go to Sugar Factory, we go to all these restaurants and they're like using it as a part of their, you know, experience for the, you know, entire restaurant. So I'd say Savage. Yeah, I'm saying Savage too. Um, one, I just love Megan. She works so hard and she's like incredible. And it's just ha always got stuck in my head. It's just a good bop, I guess. So and she's on here twice. It. So no, it's yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a sign too. It is know? a sign. She's killing it. Let's move on to our very last category, the Social Star Award. And congratulations, you are both nominated for this award. Walk me through this category. Who are you voting for? I mean, obviously, I feel like anyone that's nominated for this and getting asked this question would want to vote for themselves. But I would have to, I have to vote for Nessa. I think Nessa's made like a crazy ass transition. Like genuinely, like I, I really think like coming from where she started to where she is now, it's really impressive. A lot of people really can't break out um, of a certain stigma that people have you in. So um, I'd say Nessa. I'm voting for Jaden, huh? obviously. So I'm voting for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think his transition kind of was as smooth as mine and if i'm being honest like before i even had a chance to start music i always have been like inspired by him because he kind of was like the first one to do it in the social media scene um and he's doing incredible he's going on tour with kells he's booking all these festivals like it's just so cool to watch so yeah Great answer. <laughs> are you blushing Jaden? what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about Lottie Die because I love that song. Give me the background. Tell me a little bit about how this song came to life. What did the process look like? What did this collaboration look like? Take me back to it. We both recorded at the same studio, Sound Factory, in, in Los Angeles. And so she was recording one day and I pulled up um, just to go over some music. And her manager came out with my manager, uh, Shannon, and she was like, yo, you want to come listen to this new song that Ness is going to cut and I was like fuck yeah she had said she'd been wanting to lean more into like the rock space you know whatever that may be and so I, I was really excited to hear it so I went in and I was like fuck yeah and I told them like some things that I would like love to hear like some different guitars and then they're like so you fuck with the song and I was like yeah it's fire as fuck you could literally get anybody on this and then I like walked out of the studio little did I know then my manager comes back out and she was like hey do you want to cut on this song like Nessa would love for you be on the song and I was like oh yeah fuck yeah so I went back in and I just cut a verse and uh this is all the same day yeah this oh, is like yeah. An, oh my god <laughs> it's like in like an hour yeah, yeah. that's wild it's kind of like crazy you know and it was very fast um but I think the overall process of the song took like months honestly it did because we did so, so many long. different versions like mm -hmm. um and then we finally got Travis on it which was like gold you know what I mean so that really kind of sealed the deal and then from there on, it was just meant to be, like how everything rolled out perfectly, I feel like. What's interesting to me is that you both are sort of leading this pop punk renaissance, especially for the younger generation. What originally attracted you to this type of music? Um, I just think it's very authentic and it kind of has like some sort of like nostalgia that comes with it in a way. And there's just like so much emotion that you can put into it. And it's just cool. I don't know. I feel like it fits Jaden's vibe perfectly. And with Lottie Di, I felt like it was kind of my vibe too so it was it's just fun I think that's really like fun. the biggest thing is that it's fun to make and it's like enjoyable what sort of pressures and challenges come with having you know so many people not only invested in your personal lives but also in your music and, and your life as a creator personal life always outweighs the music and that's just a shitty feeling you know what I mean music is is like artistic and it, it's a perfect opportunity for people to be vulnerable when people kind of strip that away by only looking at whatever they want to look at instead of just like the music and like i'm an artist because i want to be an artist you know like i used tiktok as a tool um to get there um because i really don't think i could have made it any way out anywhere else you know um i come from a, a very small place you know not just like physically but like mentally I, there's just no way this could have happened you know so people like to hold on to things and they don't realize that like <laughs> we're, we're human you know um everybody's human and that's kind of the point of my music and I know Nessa's music as well is that like we are human. Great example like Angels and Demons. I had not gotten arrested yet and I released that song because I, I was talking about being on top of the world in like the lowest parts of the world and nothing had happened yet and then I got arrested. And so everyone else was like making jokes and they're like, oh, this is probably like set up. This is like 
um, for the song or whatever. But no, I actually got arrested. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's hard. Yeah. So people don't like that. They don't really care about how you feel. I know that once um, our bodies of work, whenever her, her EP coming up is, is coming out, I think people are really going to understand then. Um, but until then, we just have to wait and be patient, you know, and, and just keep doing our thing. Yeah. Well, let's talk about new music. So, Jaden, your album is coming out soon. And Nessa, you're releasing new music soon, too? No, oh, yeah, I have a single coming out um, fairly soon. And then I am planning on releasing an EP around the summer. Um, so I'm super excited about that. So I have a new single dropping June 4th. It's really one of the main focus tracks of the album. And I really think once people get to see, now with everything opening up and people getting vaccinated, it's about to skyrocket. So I hope everyone's ready because I know we both are. Uh, and I'm very, very excited. Um, and I really can't wait to just like touch uh, millions of people. That's really the goal. You know, I just want people to feel loved. And uh, I know Nessa does too. That's why it's, we really just want to make it about the music, you know? Before we let you go, one more last question. So our iHeart, you know, we have to ask like a music question. If you each could okay. describe the other one with one song, what would it be? I don't know. I, I personally, I'd say like Billy's song, I'm the bad guy. I don't know. I feel like, oh. mm. I feel like, I feel like that fits you for, because she's not saying like, I'm, she's obviously being ironic about it. You know what I mean? And of course she's like yeah. saying that's how people see her. You know what I mean? She's so like pure and stuff. I see Billy, you know, she just looks like a pure soul. That's how I see Nessa. I kind of think um, MGK's got... title track for Tickets to My Downfall, just oh. because he is doing like such amazing things and everyone's kind of plotting on him. And I feel like everyone in like the world kind of hates seeing other people succeed. But, um, yeah, for sure. He keeps going. So. You know what I mean? I mean, Kells is a really good example. I'm, I'm actually glad you said that. Like, he's been through a lot of shit, you know? He's made a lot of mistakes, just like I have. He's also been uh, mm. through a lot of trauma, just like I have. We talk about it constantly. Music is just like a gateway for him. And so the fact, when he came into this, like, punk scene, it was just so cool because he, he really started writing about, like, his mental health and stuff like that, which, you know, we've definitely seen before in, in his previous songs, but he's really, like, getting to the grit of it. And so... Fuck yeah, I fuck with that. His whole album's fire, so you could have said any song on that album. Oh, yeah. like, fuck so yeah. good. Nessa, Jaden, thank you so much for being here. So nice to meet you both. And thank you for taking everybody for our iHeartRadio Music Awards. Hopefully next time we see you, we'll be in person in our iHeart Studios. Absolutely. Yes, of course. Thanks so much for watching Nessa and Jaden Take the Booth. Be sure to tune in to our 2021 iHeartRadio Music Awards, Thursday, May 27th at 8, 7 Central, only on Fox. We'll see you there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.